Hi everyone, welcome to a new podcast episode of 21 Towers and today I'm really excited because I have a close friend and with somebody whom I've worked with, uh, my co-founder in Zeppe, Mahin Gupta. So Mahin is the founder of Liminal. Liminal is a Bitcoin and digital assets wallet and custody solution and they've been funded by some of the most reputed names in the crypto VC space. 21 Towers is excited to have partnered with Liminal to offer their multi-signature wallet solution to 21 Towers, h H&I and family office clients and I'm super excited about this conversation with him where we talk about the current Bitcoin price rally which he has no idea about, the current macro environment and of course Liminal and the future of Bitcoin and digital assets. Hi Mahin, welcome to 21 Towers uh, podcast. Thanks, thanks for having me here. So after Lynn Alden, you are my second guest, uh, so super excited, but the first guest on a face-to-face -face podcast. So we've been trying to do face-to-face -face podcast, but we are in Singapore, I'm in Singapore, luckily you are in Singapore, so this has finally worked out. And we've obviously worked together for a very long time, building India's first Bitcoin exchange in 2014, Zepay. And I remember, I think we were doing... Uh, a first kind of a video take introducing ourselves and I know from that time that you hate uh, being behind cameras so how are you feeling right now <laughs> again same I'm I'm sweating my uh, my hands right now but uh, very it's always pleasure to talk to you and it's always it's a, it's an honor to be here with you and uh, love talking to you always so I was joking with the team behind the cameras that we should just put a laptop over here and then you'll be comfortable because you're yeah, the geek sure. who's the most comfortable behind the laptop. But uh, anyway, so, uh, a couple, so I asked you the I asked you about the Bitcoin price rally and you said like, what's the Bitcoin price? You honestly had no idea that Bitcoin <laughs> has rallied over the last three days. No idea. <laughs> so I, you said the price is eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that was my my best guess. Actually, the last time I checked, it was like seventeen thousand or something, and See, I thought that you don't have a widget yeah. on the phone. You on the watch. No. I have a I have a I have the price on the watch on my phone. You don't check the price every day. No. That's that's I think part and parcel of running a startup, eh, because you have already fifty decisions to make uh, in your Slack, in your emails, and so on, and you forget about all of this. I just feel like, of course, yeah, we're going to get into that. You run a crypto, uh, you know, wallet solution, Liminal, I'm of course going to discuss that. But I just kind of feel like when you are running a crypto company, all the marketing efforts are directly related to the price. So if the price goes up, the customers and the clients and the users come. And so don't you want to check the price whether the clients are coming or no? Absolutely, you are right. While uh, the rallies and everything uh, makes a lot of difference in terms of the sentiment across the whole uh, uh, economy and market segment but i believe that the the type of infrastructure that we are uh, we are building and we are so passionate about it most of the time our job is to make sure that everyone inside this infrastructure is secure and they it's reliable uh, and uh, in general they feel good about uh, how the digital assets are being managed and so on sometimes actually honestly uh, uh, after the whole contagion and everything, actually, I, I I thought that again, okay, it will go through the same cycles again, then you will have like a one year, two year time of building. And then again, of course, uh, people will come start talking about the benefits and everything. And then again, it will start. So I think uh, as everyone uh, calls it again, it's a time to build. But actually, I, I we have lived through this for like three, four times, I guess. And uh, it's so a journey. We lived through the well. We started Zeppe in the bottom of the bear market Absolutely. in 2014, 2015, and then we saw the 2017, 2018 cycle, and then the last cycle. So, and you know, you have seen a cycle before. So, you've been in Bitcoin since 2011, <laughs> 2010, 2011. Oh my God, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, right. So, what do you think is the? So, do you think that history is going to repeat itself, or do you think that the? time of cycles is over see again if you see bitcoin and uh, other crypto as asset class then asset classes are have will have to follow the market cycles there is really no way and with market cycles i think you're meaning the macro the macro. cycles which affects every asset now absolutely so it's got nothing to do with the asset it's to do with the macro absolutely so it, there is always a point of time in the whole cycle when the macro dictates everything and at that time, it doesn't matter asset is good, bad. Of course, uh, if asset is bad, then they will just die. 
and if asset is good then they will survive and they will come back same thing like for an example people talking about amazon and microsoft and all of these uh, shares uh, or all of these companies losing a lot of uh, value in the market cap but uh, if they are, if, if the company is strong if the asset is strong then they will come back and so on so i think it's a it's a part and parcel having said that i personally believe that efficient technology replaces inefficient technology in a decent enough timeline and to me honestly bitcoin is one of the most efficient technology in terms of finance money and everything so it will take time but yeah any price predictions for this year or halving do you think bitcoin's price is going to follow the halving cycle because halving has a less and less impact uh, in terms of i mean there are already 19 million bitcoin out of 21 million right so halving now from a supply point of view has a less and less impact so my theory is that the halving cycles have a lesser and lesser impact uh, on bitcoin's price but i would love to know what you think halving is there next year i think ultimately the the most important factor is the distribution and network effect and according to me if you ask me the segment in which bitcoin is competing right now i don't think so there is any other asset class which is competing that particular part i think uh, uh, it, it, the 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 technical parameters would start uh, would not make a lot of difference as we go ahead and rather than the the distribution and the strength of this particular asset class uh for the particular reason or use case it is going after will matter will matter most and i think as we as we go into a very uh, disturbed economy and very challenging economy uh i think uh, bitcoin will have a much much better uh, pricing and valuation compared to what it is enjoying right now and uh, technical parameters yes they matter but again uh, at a macro level in the bigger picture of things uh, i don't think so it matters a lot so you mean like you think that it's going to be more adoption and not any more halving and stuff but adoption also is cyclical in its own way absolutely and and again it's uh, distribution matters and uh, as we as more and more uh, companies and no, more and more institutions see bitcoin as a treasury asset class uh, it would create this more distribution and network effect again and again and again and then i i i never believe that retail is the if if we are talking about asset class then uh, uh, retail is the primary factor or primary force for any of the asset class to grow or any of the asset class to win that particular market segment so institution adoption while it might look like that institution adop- adoption is halted or it's a uh, it's stagnant uh, i believe that very steadily and surely uh, it has been increasing and according to me uh, that should be the catalyst right and i mean that's the target market for liminal which we are going to get into for but before that any lessons from the ftx contagion absolutely that so if uh, i have i i am in this ecosystem from for 10 plus years now and uh, when people were you among the what would you say you were among the first few 100 people in the world to know bitcoin or first few 1000 people in the world uh, i i cannot claim i cannot make any of the claim and that's a good part about bitcoin it creates the ecosystem of that on, on in that era the nerds and the geeks and so on who doesn't like to kind of a come on something but i think uh, uh, it was very very early at that time and you started india's first bitcoin company and i know i've yes. joked about it that you are the father of bitcoin in india which you hated <laughs> but it's a true title can you dispute that yeah yeah of course i will <laughs> i will dispute that i think bitcoin doesn't need any father or any 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 figure who kind of uh, uh, promotes it in fact this is the one big point about bitcoin you don't find bitcoin promoters there are few people like who are like bitcoin <laughs> maximalists bitcoiners and so on but there is really no bitcoin promoter who goes on and keep promoting uh, uh, bitcoin actually you know what like i've always thought because i know you i've always thought that the people who've contributed who contribute most to bitcoin are not known like i'm like the world doesn't know you like you know the world knows people like me who really directly don't contribute to bitcoin i mean of course we are evangelists and big believers and contribute in our own way but there are so many technical people like you who are in the background doing your stuff behind a computer building stuff uh, you know and we'll get into that also a little bit <laughs> just yeah absolutely yeah It, so sorry you were talking about the lessons uh, from the ftx contagion so yes uh, 
So the point I was trying to make is that if someone says that if they have spent like 10 years in this industry and they have seen it again and again, I think they are making mistake. The whole FTX contagion, it, it actually started from 2022 May, somewhere around about with whole uh, 3AC Luna fiasco and so on. Uh, I think uh, the size of the whole uh, uh, segment now and the type of players now involved and the, the, uh, the overall adoption, this was really really something very huge and very very big event i don't think so i have seen something like this uh, before people the exchanges need... which crashed in the past you don't think it's comparable so for an example mount gox when uh, when it was handling 70% of the uh, market share at that time but and it's it very went small worse. market share but the market share was very small yeah. and the type of participants i'm sorry the market cap was very small yeah market cap was very yeah. small and the participants involved were not yeah. Uh, that big enough but yeah. right now the scale of these events are, are really huge uh, if you ask me lessons then uh, very simple the first thing and the foremost thing uh, which uh, I loved about Andreas Antonopoulos who's, who said this thing somewhere around 15-16 I guess not your keys not your coins which I, I truly believe that sometimes people forget about January 3rd uh, which is like a proof of keys day I, I still celebrate it personally uh, while there is no really uh, a big like I, I believe that uh, it's it's much bigger day than Bitcoin Pizza Day, but yeah, it's a third Jan is the proof of keys day. Yes, the day yes. Bitcoin was born. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Okay, or I I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a not you keep your... learning something new in spite of being in Bitcoin since years. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So again, not your keys, not your coin, as Andrea says that. I think that's the first lesson. Uh, sometimes so explain is... that to the audience. Yeah. So see, first thing is that. Uh, if you are interested in an asset class, then you have to learn about that particular asset class. And every asset class has its own traits. One of the most fundamental traits with, uh, uh, with uh, a crypto or Bitcoin as an asset class is that uh, ideally you want to hold the custody, which means that you control the, the assets that you own. And that's the fundamental difference between other asset class and the crypto asset class. You mean you are un you mean a person should cannot custody Bitcoin with a organization like we are used to with other asset classes That's, like in a Bitcoin bank. Yeah, there has to be a reason for it. Let's say for an example, if regulation dictates you to have uh, and and there are good reasons for that. I'm not saying that uh, custodying with exchanges is a bad idea. But then give an example when it's a good idea. Yeah, uh, for an example, if you are let's say a trader or a fund or something and you are holding uh, your assets into something like FTX, which is an offshore unregulated exchange, FTX International, it's a bad idea. So you mean that uh, it's a bad idea to custody your crypto on an offshore unregulated exchange? Absolutely. In every circumstance? In every circumstance. So FTX is a bad idea? FTX International Binance. is a bad idea. Binance, yes, if it is, uh, if you don't know where your uh, assets are in under which jurisdiction, then yes, it's I mean, a bad Binance, idea. I don't think you'd know. Uh, so Binance has like a lot of companies, Binance US, Binance yeah. Singapore yeah, and so true. on. But okay. uh, it, so if you know that which jurisdiction, jurisdiction you are dealing with and ideally if it is a local jurisdiction, then it What is the benefit be. of that? So let's say sometimes uh, regulation asks you to not custody your coins and so on. Like for an example, if you are a trading exchange and you are accepting customers deposits and so on and uh, the regulation asks you to not custody yourself and use a qualified custody at that time you want to use a qualified custodian so uh, in general very simple hold your coins yourself that's the first thing yeah if it is not possible Especially by for regulatory, private individuals right? absolutely and, and family for, offices also yeah for family offices it doesn't make sense to have a uh, a uh, 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 your coins on a, on a centralized exchange until unless you are managing a trust which requires you to have it in a centralized exchange or and something. And even in that case, why a centralized exchange? Have a separate custodian, right? Absolutely. And exchanges are honeypot. So, I mean, according to me, exchanges should not be a custodian solution at all for anybody. Absolutely. In traditional market also, it happens this way. The trading part is with one, it's like a, a broker uh, dealer, then there is a trading I'm interface sure and then there is a settlement interface and then there is a custodian depository. Yeah. I think we, we would reach there somewhere around yeah. about by 2025, most of the uh, wide jurisdiction or most of the uh, the good jurisdiction will have this type of system. And I, I don't think so. It's a bad idea. 
having said that when people say that okay you are a bitcoiner you are a, a uh, you are a you are part of crypto ecosystem and still you are saying that it's a good idea to have a custodian and so on see it 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 really depends that what type of your use case is if you are able to hold the uh, the, the coins yourself then it is absolutely important what people forget about is that bitcoin gives you this choice in a traditional asset class you don't have this choice you will have to use a third party custodian always and always even if you are uh, willing to hold your let's say shares or other asset class and something you are not able to do that so what you're saying is for sure absolutely if you can hold your keys absolutely. and self custody that is but in some cases due to regulatory requirements if you're a family or a fund or something in that case uh, a separate custodial service is something that you do not have any problems recommending anyways you don't have any choice in that absolutely that's the lesson learned absolutely any absolutely. other lesson learned uh, one thing is that never trust anyone <laughs> because people uh, ftx used to be like 40 billion dollar company and so on one, one one big lesson that as i have learned is in in my whole life is that this whole new technologies whatever the new technologies are are coming including internet or crypto or other or even for for that matter ai it is always a grand experiment so if you want to be part of the revolution or if you want want to be the part of the adoption at an earlier stage be uh, be okay to deal with some of the uh, some of the hiccups that will come through this slightly uh, more than i cup yes <laughs> uh, yes yeah. so just as understand that these things are not matured enough at at least at this stage and uh, if you are a retail if you are a uh, uh, in if if you are looking at it as an investment then just do the simple investment thing don't put money which you don't afford to lose don't put money before understanding what you are putting into it so it's a it's a very simple thing treat it as if if you are investing in it then treat it as an investment rather than something like you because it's a buzz and you just go there yeah i mean i think those are investment 101 which unfortunately that education we still don't get it in schools and universities and stuff and there are so many people in especially retail people individual users who learn it the hard way i still remember that i had my first bitcoin transaction with you overlooking that transaction and i was nervous when i sent that bitcoin from one wallet as i i just kind of nervously waiting for it to reach the other wallet i mean this is how that technology still is for somebody new and i mean and and i think people like you and me with our companies with you with liminal and me with 21 towers we are trying to be for me i always say i am trying to be for my clients what you were for me you know that somebody who is overlooking your first steps into bitcoin and then of course help you become your own bitcoiner you know absolutely absolutely and again this is how it it should be you you really don't need to kind of a be a uh, brave or kind of a yeah. try to geek be, yeah yeah I, i i'm not a techie and i i am a bitcoin evangelist and i you know i know i did i learned python and i got into bitcoin and i actually understood bitcoin even before i understood it technically and i think the reason i'm mentioning it is of course you are a geek so everybody will assume oh of course you'll get, understand bitcoin but no i mean at a conceptual level regular people can understand bitcoin i think it's a matter of the 10 to 50 hours that you need to give it Absolutely. and it seems short but 10 to 50 it's 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 surprising to me that people want to invest in something without giving it investing that 10 to 50 hours also in it absolutely absolutely and also sometimes we 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 think that it is too overwhelming it is very complicated yes it is complicated because you haven't uh, tried it yeah. okay the first thing that you want to do is uh, try it and then you will see that down the line 10 days 30 days or 50 days you will realize that okay these are the fundamentals of this thing yeah. think on those lines in uh, yeah, early it's not 90s, rocket science yeah yeah in early 90s when you want to in and this is what i i i think people forget about that when internet was trying to get the distribution in or adoption in at that time the bigger challenge was that how to access internet so you go to cyber cafe you yeah. use it from the dial, dial time uh, the the dial up modems dialing modems yeah 56 kbps exactly and now you access things with internet yeah, infrastructure okay inversion. so the, now the problem statement is changed before the problem statement was how you access internet and now internet is ubiquitous everyone understands everyone has gone through that learning curve yeah. and everyone can access things with internet 
same thing will happen here absolutely right now the problem statement is how you access bitcoin, bitcoin. Yeah. okay the next stage would be once the adoption happens that how you access things or On services bitcoin via bitcoin yeah it's called i mean i'm just in donopolis again uh, i think it one of his talks calls it infrastructure inversion uh, it's just uh, it's a simple concept that you need um, a new technology needs the existing old infrastructure to work on which it's not meant for and suddenly you will see that that new technology has become the infrastructure on which the traditional <laughs> absolutely uh, industry then has to kind of you know yeah, and we have on. seen it over and over yeah. uh, including andreas's example of horse and car yeah. and so on and yeah. then of course wipe yeah, yeah voice the, over internet yeah, protocol the internet yeah, used to run on uh, on phone lines and now yeah. phone lines runs on top of internet so normally i ask my guest what their background is right in the beginning i completely forgot to ask you because i know you so what's your background and how did you get into bitcoin so i am again a computer science graduate started my career in an it services company uh, started a startup as it services company got a contract to build a bitcoin exchange and that's how I got into bitcoin 2011 yeah and uh, uh, eventually built uh, zeppe with you and sora when it was really really life changing experience in terms of building uh, uh, building a, a, an organization uh, from just a concept uh, learned a lot and then of course moved on and now building liminal uh with a with a mission to secure the infrastructure uh on which uh, digital assets run so digital assets are not bitcoin so you're are you a bitcoin maximalist no absolutely not <laughs> and i don't think and this so. is the only i love you as a person i do in spite of this <laughs> See, how are you not a bitcoin maximalist see i i i believe that see when you see it as an investment class bitcoin makes lot of sense okay when you see as a technology you always want to become a technology maximalist when in 2010 11 if i am not open to technologies other technologies i would not i would have discarded bitcoin as well so if if it comes to about technology then i am open to listening the ideas about okay how ethereum is going to do the proof of stake now you can have a very different argument that proof of stake is same like banks and so on which we can go into detail whether it makes sense or not but sub- everything is not a black and white it has to be a spectrum but when you go into the technicalities of okay how they are coming to a consensus on a distributed system with this type of parameters that fascinates me and then when i learn about cosmos how they try to implement ibc then i learn about solana okay how they are going to try to solve this transaction problem and so on you can you can debate that whether that is required or not okay then we are discussing a very different thing but they're not conscious scams absolutely not i don't think so uh anything which is not related to trading you can debate that whether they raised fund in a in a compliant manner or not and their tokens i think see the to- need for tokens see again i think tokens are a way to raise money you can debate and tokens are are much much more efficient at raising money compared to let's say for an example raising equity. money in a private equity or a public equity and that's so that's only on. because of regulation right they are that's because there is a regulatory no. requirement no or you mean in terms of technology yes well? in terms of technology this is a much much more efficient technology okay you think on these lines that you have one address and uh, the whole let's say for an example right now if you want to this is a, by the, the way very painful conversation <laughs> and i don't want to go in that direction of talking about shit coins which we have decided to use the word yeah i, I totally <laughs> agree see if you are if you are raising money but we will from, spend a few more minutes yeah, to yeah, get yeah, your sure, point sure. across yeah so the point here is that if it is about technology then yes if you are building it as a startup solving a problem then yes it is it is a good thing if are you are they solving any new problems see again like for an example we may disagree that ethereum should exist or not but you can see right now let's go into the ftx contagion question okay all centralized lending system failed all of those people who 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 failed including 3ac or including blockfi and so on which loan they paid first their defi you did not need to know that what kind of a blockfi collateral is there or what kind of obligations they have with other organizations and so on it was available on compound or it was available on other other ecosystem other defi applications so according to me yes the need is there we can debate on that the platform on which it is built i don't think so any bitcoiner would say that defi is a bad thing or i i don't think so they would say that even nfts are a bad thing but no, if you use nfts like you say exactly that <laughs> yeah i and that's a good point na that's a good point like for an example bitcoiner needs evangelist who actually promotes the use case 
for which Bitcoin should there. But I don't think so. Bitcoin and Ethereum are competing each other. It's a very, very different thing. I see Bitcoin as an asset class. I see Ethereum as a more like an AWS or more is like a technology platform. Now, you can you can comment that on AWS there are hundreds of scams running. That's fine. That's very fine. No, no. I, I, okay. Since the audience is primarily people who are looking at these assets from an investment point of view, what is your view on investing or buying anything else? Bitcoin, you've clearly mentioned. I have never invested. You know, this in, is not financial I have advice, never invested but... in any token. I have never invested in any other asset class which I don't understand. I only understand Bitcoin as an asset class. I understand Ethereum and other chains for technology. Okay. So if I think that uh, they are they are good and I, I want to invest in them, then I will try to understand them as an investment class. Right. So, but you've not. No. Of course, you understand Ethereum and you understand all of these tech. Yeah, but, but I, haven't, still... I haven't even evaluated them for an asset class because I believe that Bitcoin... But the, the evaluation in the asset class, if the technology is uh, legit, then the doesn't the prospect of it becoming an asset class is directly linked so because then the adoption happens not actually supply. so for an example i believe that your portfolio and your asset class distribution is like your your private health you everyone is different i am very uh, very conservative in in terms of my uh, investment and asset class uh, choosing asset class i believe that bitcoin itself is a very risky asset class and on top of that, you if you go into venture into other asset class which are even not five years old, I don't think so. My my risk appetite is there. Why is Bitcoin risky? Bitcoin is a very risky asset class because it has spent only ten years in it. There are other other factors which is not in control of Bitcoin in terms of adoption, in terms of regulation, in terms of uh, the price volatility, including let's say for an example, if macro cycle is capital rich at that time, all risk asset class would go up would go down is there a default risk according to you so so yes. cap, so macro environments going up and down is a volatility risk okay that's fine the internet has gone through its own volatile adoption cycles but is there a risk of a complete like a stoppage of the network according to you absolutely yes it's a technology I mean, it's an open source code tech isn't 10 years in a tech is there a would you consider that risk is applicable for the internet as well? Yes. So it's at that same level. Exactly. I mean, we trust... Not at the same level, Lindy effect helps the internet a lot more compared to Bitcoin. But having said that, I think I... At a uh, what I'm trying to say is, is it just a risk because you have to kind of mention it as a risk or is it really a risk? It's a, again, it's a technology. I'm a, I'm a software programmer. I have programmed softwares. I might not be a very good programmer, but I know... That everything is a program. Everything is a program. You, you, you invented, and we want to put it on record because I've always wanted to do that. You invented batching of transactions. Uh, invented. You were the first person. Strong, but we, yeah, but we we implemented at Zappe at a first. very real. Yeah, yeah. First. And we actually saved it. Yeah, we were I think first deploying it on a real exchange on a real wallets, and and it actually saved a lot of money. That was a big thing. Yeah. And then other exchanges did that over the next year, one year. Yes. I just wanted to make an example that I think you're a pretty good programmer. Uh, again, I, I defer to that part. But what I'm saying here is that it's a huge grand technology experiment. The way internet was initially, internet would have... The impact is grand. I mean, if they, in terms of the tech itself, it's a simple protocol which is there. I mean, which has been open source. It has been running since 10 years, 24-7, 100% except 99.99 in a couple of years. I mean, once a open source software, which is kind of custom built for a specific purpose, is running for so long, the tech risk is... Because you are comparing it with other systems which have failed more than Bitcoin, correct? It does not give you a, a, a guarantee or surety that Bitcoin would not fail as a network. I'm just comparing it with the internet. That yeah, is time with, let's, enough. Let's go with Maybe the first couple of years, I would agree that that's a really a valid risk. Let's go back to, let's say, for an example, somewhere around 2018, 19, when there was a hard fork in Bitcoin. Yeah. And uh, Bitcoin could have hard forked with assets, number of assets or number of Bitcoins in, in the software code would have been changed or would have been increased or decreased or something. The point here is that ultimately it's a software and the software doesn't run in silos. Software run in a context. It is running on a different, different machines with different, different type of uh, versions, different different type of servers, different different type of people have different different say in its rules and so on. So if it is a software, it is all there is always a time, there, there is always a chance that it will fail. As the time progresses, Lindy effect, 
the chances or the type of attack vectors would go down it does not mean that uh, uh, it's it the risk is not there. there the risk is always there are you comfortable putting a substantial part of your portfolio in absolutely bitcoin absolutely because i have understood the risks and i know it uh, from a tech uh, tech perspective and uh, and i would not put on on any other to on any other chains or any other tokens because i don't understand the technology risk there or even investment risk there but so over here you are with the tech risk that you are saying it has you are comfortable putting a substantial portion of your yes because i understand bitcoin and if i so according to you that risk is then not there for your no, own no but it is for me no i'm i'm talking your opinion from your knowledge yes but when you are so when you're talking on a podcast and sometimes people see that you know bitcoin then they will take a kind of a bite out of it and try to replicate it it's a it's going to be a bad idea if you okay so you are warning bitcoin. other people that you have to figure out your own risk from a tech point of view absolutely but for yourself you've reached a very comfortable point from a tech risk absolutely. point of view absolutely and be- from a regulatory risk point of view for yourself for your own personal investment i i personally believe that regulation is always lagging behind innovation and yeah. regulation will come regulation should come and regulation will be there i don't think so people even if i'm a bitcoiner truly and i believe that everyone should hold their own asset class i think that regulations are necessary because not everyone understands the nitty gritty of uh, the whole ecosystem and the type of pe- the type of people that gets into into the ecosystem sometimes with a good intention sometimes with a bad intention so i think regulation is important it is coming it it is already coming in lot of places and i think according to my me by 2025 or 2030 uh, regulation would come it's because of comments like this that you say you are the only bitcoiner i hate to love <laughs> normally i would say love to hate but in your case hate to love <laughs> it's like regulations are not bad thing see regulations are good thing if you want uh, general people to be at adoption let's say for an example electricity or even internet if it is not standardized if the regulation is not there then you would face issues which should not exist ideally so that that actually helps having said that the promise of bitcoin the promise of crypto is that you hold your own assets and i think uh, it's a very good thing people get exposed to it uh, bitcoin via a regulated uh, ecosystem and then they learn more about it they learn about the promise they learn about the the potential and then they go through this whole learning curve and start uh, adopting uh, their own bitcoins in their own keys so what's liminal and why should somebody use it so so it's a it's a very simple story when uh, uh, when we got our zep pay and then we uh, i started personally looking into what to do next one of the biggest problem statement was uh, the ai based task list startup idea <laughs> did not go anywhere <laughs> but i was like fun. bitcoin need it's not bitcoin needs you but you can contribute to the biggest project in the world and i was the happiest person when i came to know that you finally decided to get back into the bitcoin world because you know but that was fun i guess uh, i i I'll very quickly for one minute say that what i was trying to build and i actually i i i was actually complete the poc that rather than creating a to do list where people input their to do list you can actually use ai to predict the to do list <laughs> so rather than i put my to do list there the the to do list actually predicts me that okay you are supposed to do this this that that it was fun project yeah no but i you guess give me the idea that's like you know anything you do other than bitcoin i hate those ideas but anyways so then liminal yeah so the first problem statement was that how do you manage your assets and when you are talking about crypto assets, assets yeah digital assets crypto assets bitcoin specifically and one of the fundamental thing is that when you are handling assets at that time it's not about you it's about again managing that this assets are your with your family as well how your family is going to access it in case something happens to you how do you make sure about security how do you dump it down so that people even if you make security inconvenient then people will just uh, create uh, loopholes around that and it becomes and keep bitcoin on exchanges exactly right. exactly so the first problem statement was for me personally how do i manage my digital assets custody custody uh, so, uh, storage storage and yeah. while they were very powerful. so liminal is a digital asset storage solution yes what's the target audience uh the target audience is of course for a treasury use case for a storage use case it's uh, for hni family offices funds and so on in fact any corporate treasury if you want to store it securely in a very simplified manner then liminal is the place in fact i i believe that my team has built uh, one of the best solution in the market 
it's so simple it's so elegant and it's so secure according to me and so uh, I'll pitch it over here <laughs> i use liminal uh, i've been using it since I the started. beginning and not because i know you because i actually totally believe that that's the only solution for a multi sig wallet which we will explain to the audience which i can use along with other family members there is no solution out there before that i can't expect my family members to use electrum uh, and so it is truly the best solution and again just a small pitch that 21 towers my company has tied up with liminal to offer liminal uh, wallet solution especially to hnis and family offices which is my target audience uh, you know my clientele so uh, that partnership just started i think a couple of weeks back and we are rolling out the first few wallets to first few 21 towers clients so if you are interested in what you're talking about you can reach out to 21 towers and uh, you know we can take care of you but go ahead yeah so the the problem statement started from there we build the infrastructure i got uh, most of my team here uh, we who used to work with me at zepay how big is the team now uh, right now we are around about 50 55 people yeah and uh, one of the fundamental is that we want to st- still uh, be the small team i think according to me 50 55 people the type of uh, infrastructure that we are building is. yes <laughs> it's a very small team but having said that from there the concept uh, included see you have to understand that okay you you make the retail uh, or the family offices and all of this uh, people secure but what if exchanges are not secure what if uh, the other payment processor and uh, other ecosystem is not secure enough then I- I- at any point of time the pareto principle 80% of assets would be with these people and 20% of assets would be in a self custody and so on so uh, uh, at that time uh, me and my tech team and my product team realized that it is really important to as a uh, as as a infrastructure play improve the overall security of this ecosystem and that is where we uh, we we built our couple of products which uh, focuses on the infrastructure of exchanges payment processors funds and so on where so there are kind of two parts one is the infrastructure that you provide for crypto businesses yes uh, like exchanges uh, and of course you have first hand experience in that you build the crypto infrastructure for zepay and i think that's you've got pretty good success with that you've got some you know pretty big customers uh, which who use liminal and then there is a separate part for hnis family offices with which we are also partnering with to kind of sign up uh, hnis and family offices to the liminal wallet correct correct, correct. if i'm wrong correct. these uh, two parts the, the only thesis that we are working on is we are focused in apec and mina region and uh, mm. we believe that uh, as again i am saying that uh, regulation is coming and regulatory custody or qualified custody is a, is a very important piece of are you regulated I, i i do you have licenses yeah so we have already applied for licenses in abu dhabi uh, edg abu dhabi hong kong and uh, in in singapore it is right now not a regulated activity but yeah. once it is a regulated activity we will apply for the license here as so well. getting licenses is a core part of a strategy i know that i just yes kind of and, and it is important for businesses to work and deal with uh, uh, with infrastructure which are licensed and yeah. which want to run an infrastructure at a security compliance and automation level which is uh, which is compliant with the local jurisdiction yeah and also because your target customers are not typically retail they are institutions family offices hni so i think licensing to get licenses is extremely important for you yes and also that and you are not trying this li- regulatory arbitrage uh, strategy no. at all i don't think so i i think uh, that particular era of regulatory arbitrage or loopholes uh, uh i think that that has gone or it is very very close uh, to the end. rapidly closing i think now the businesses uh, which are actually want to be on ground and provide the real services will be able to survive and will be able to thrive i don't think so now in crypto business infrastructure space you will find businesses who want to survive uh there will be only businesses who want to thrive and you have to work with local jurisdiction for that and there are other solutions in the market any comment on how liminal is different or better i think uh, it, it's not about being better or different uh, i think it is more about that we need more players in this space yeah. to increase actually the security compliance and efficiency of this space but one thing that that we want to touch upon is on a treasury side of thing for hni family offices we really worked hard on dumping it down yes it was really really important like small small decisions that we made for an example let's not show 
uh, the the fees and everything here. Okay? Yes, I and love. Less, yeah, less. I love the dumping down of the ticket. Anybody can use it, truly. Yes. And it almost feels like a Gmail kind of a experience. You log in, it's all there, and there is nothing about the tech that you need to understand. Absolutely, it's all there like a traditional, like things that you we are used to. Yeah. And one there's thing, no demo. There's nothing that's required. Absolutely. And one thing that that we have dumbed down, which 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 I'm very proud of my team, is it was very difficult project. That how do you make sure that using Trezor and Ledger feels like you are using bank tokens? Yeah, exactly. And that's the other key point. You are you are still using all of the security principles of the core layer. So I mean, I'm going to talk only about Bitcoin. So it uses Bitcoin security, Bitcoin's wallet. It's got nothing to do with liminal. So if tomorrow you do not exist, that wallet that a client creates is easily replicable on any other open source software. So you're not tied up with liminal. Liminal is just a layer on top of an. Actually, you built it on top of Electrum, which is an open source software. Yes. So it has all the security benefits. You have just built a amazing UI UX layer on top, which is a big thing. Absolutely. So we started with uh, building on top of Electrum, simple MVP principles. But yeah. now the infrastructure is much more complex, right. and using just Electrum will not be able to survive for businesses and so and on. And also for other cryptos, maybe. Right? Yes, 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 yes. So, okay. So uh, the again, the pitch is very simple. That uh, uh, the difference between other uh, businesses and and we is that we focus a lot on automation because we believe that. Uh, uh, if you want to achieve, let's say, zero key leakage or zero key exposure, then you want to automate most of the infrastructure. Which the audience will have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> there are advantages. Let's yes, say. yes. yes. And Invisible advantages which you know people are not aware of, and which you take care of. Yes, and also one more important thing is that uh, we try to build compliance at a at a fundamental level. So, for an example, if you are a small business or HNI, you are not going to get a license from. TRM labs or chain analysis for your compliance like AML checks and so on. If travel rule becomes important, then you are not going to get those licenses. What we are doing is, we you are don't have to worry about it. Absolutely. Everything yeah. works for travel you. rule. Hate the, I, I know what it is. <laughs> Just you say it in a nice way as if it's going to be a part of it. And I cringe when I hear about these things. But I think for you, you are, you are like, you cannot fight what's happening. I mean, if it's happening, the travel rule is happening. You will have to build it in. You need to see it th this way. Let's say, for an example, when VoIP started on internet, every regulator, every company, and every local jurisdiction wanted to fight it Bad out. It. They they banned it and everything. Yeah. But over a period of same time. Same thing. Yeah. Efficient technology replaces yeah. inefficient technology. So, so in the end, we'll win. Right? In the end, Bitcoin exactly. will win. So so uh, and I believe you are funded by some really famous people. Uh, I don't know whether they are. They are I would like to, but yeah, uh, I love the the people. Everything who is humble response. You're not a good computer scientist. You don't have. <laughs> you're not the best programmer. <laughs> the the VCs that have funded Liminal are not the most famous names. I, we have to change this. But I'm I'm happy that you said Liminal is the best wallet solution out there, which I truly believe. So go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, we uh, we raised uh, some some money in uh, back in last year uh, for I think somewhere around about April, May, June, and we are backed by Elevation Capital, which is uh, which is one of the very most reputed uh, funds for early stage companies. And it was a very conscious choice uh, talking to talking to them a lot of time. I I, I dealt with Vash, Utkars, and uh, in Ravi on that. And then we have uh, a few more uh, very reputed and very helpful uh, uh, VCs and angels who help them, including uh, 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 Kerenza, Nexus, uh, Hest, uh, uh, a few more, LD Capital, Better Capital. Is it one of those things that if you're forgetting somebody's name, they'll feel bad? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think, uh, so, so for an example, Andrea Sentinopolis is on board with us. And I'm, I'm and you're allowed to say that, board. huh? Yeah. I think I am allowed to say that. <laughs> Andrew does is... not allow, but in your case, I think he would allow you to say that. Yes, and I, I'm I'm really honored to have him on board. In fact, he helped me a lot of time on not only on a on a security and and technical side of things, but sometimes you have this blind spot when you are running businesses and so on. At that time, he's he's really really good to listen to. And then, of course, there are a lot of uh, angels. And Balaji Srinivasan is on board, and then uh, Polygon founders are on board. I'm going to and reach out to you to make sure all of these become podcast guests absolutely, for 21 yes, Towers. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Okay. And how are these, how have these people been during the last couple of months? Are they supportive? Is that extra pressure on you? 
during the this you know really really bad bear market that we've gone or because they're bitcoiners things are okay i think they uh, or at least crypto vcs i think see one thing is that everyone understands this uh, and they they understand capital markets better than me for sure and uh, everyone was uh, expecting whatever ha- whatever is happening right now but uh, all of our backers are very supportive in fact uh, people don't know this but we use our our uh, our investors a lot like kind of uh, our fa- our employees most of the time and we go to them we help they we are super them. happy to listen to this <laughs> we ask them for help in hiring we ask that them way. for introductions and yeah. so on yeah. and uh, it it just makes sense uh, to have people like that backing you uh, of course the 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 market uh, uh, market condition in terms of capital raises are not that good and we respect that part yeah. but having said that they have always been supportive uh, what is more important is that the clarity you have in in your business strategy or execution and then you have to get people on board uh, of course you want to get your investors on board but it is more important that you get your employees also on board with your strategy and and what you want to achieve i think this is the one part uh, where uh, exposure to this industry helped me where i have a clarity on 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 what we want to achieve at livinel and many people know you and many people have known zeppe and clients what kind of clients have you been able to onboard uh, any names you are comfortable to share uh, i'm not sure whether they would be comfortable or not but uh, okay. uh, we have a few good family offices who trust us uh, uh, with their digital assets and i don't know that over which countries are you people yeah, have so people our, our our customers are from uh, singapore uh, indonesia south korea uae uh, japan and and so on so i think we are very uh, again our focus is an apex mina region and uh, it it helps to have these customers uh, everywhere we have people from we have customers in africa as well right so again just a pitch if you are a family office or an hni uh, please reach out to 21 towers to reach out to us and we can help you support uh, and open your custody solution with liminal future plans any exciting things coming out 23 is a year of reckoning for everyone involved in the business so i think uh, we are very excited about 23 this year we will uh, focus a lot on 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 product and our regulatory approvals and i think uh, the the type of team uh, uh, we were, we are able to build because of the people in liminal and uh, the support we are getting pretty much excited about uh, about 23 i think that in 23 uh because of the whole ftx contagion and everything i think most of the speculative uh plays have been washed out now and people who are not serious and just uh, was able to start a, a business or something just because the capital was available are also now struggling to survive and most probably they will have to either pivot and do a good business strategy uh so i think it's a it's a very good time to build Uh, I think that after Q1 23, uh, the things would settle, and uh, hopefully the contagion would stopped by would have stopped by this time. There are a couple of uh, still big names which are still struggling. Hopefully, which ones? Uh, uh, so of course everyone knows that uh, DCG Genesis uh, is struggling. So we will get a conclusion on that part. and then of course there are a lot of uh, crypto proceedings from ftx ftx uh, ftx uh, block fee and so on so yeah. i think this all things will settle down and then of course regulatory clarity will come in fact like for an example i'm 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 so so excited about the way uae is treating right now the regulation japan is treating the regulation right now in fact japan regulation uh, should be looked at because ftx international had issues but ftx japan which used to be liquid or coin uh coin uh before uh did not have that much issue so uh including south korea and so on hopefully south korea is okay because they went through ups and downs right absolutely ups and downs okay. are there what i'm talking about is a regulatory clarity yeah, so the no, regulatory from, clarity okay. is coming It's, okay uh, yeah. yeah it is coming so according to me i think uh, whatever we are saying is right now good and of course on top of that i'm i'm pretty much excited about the trajectory of bitcoin and uh, uh, which you do not do. track at all you completely miss this rally yeah, of the last i, I always <laughs> like having because it's a again as a tech it's a it's a very it's a it, it's a magic look at okay. look at you geek out on the <laughs> on so, having yeah. <laughs> yeah but no i, I it, it looks it. like a magic everyone <laughs> just agrees to these rules okay and it's if you magic. disagree then you can run your own chain and yeah. you have to fight own it out point. for the adoption and everything yep. so it's like a it's like a personification of game theory 
Yeah. And as a as a just a computer guy, when people talk about game theory, most of the time they talk about nonsense. But when you see game theory Work. actually uh, as a personified in a distributed software, four hundred billion dollar game theory at play. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a pretty cra- you people don't people forget about this thing that the crypto ecosystem was two trillion dollar, and as a human, we sometimes underestimate the numbers. numbers. This yes. is a very a large huge number. number. It's a yeah. huge, huge number. Yes. And if it was able to achieve that, then there was something. Yep. And uh, I, I'm pretty excited about, uh, again, uh, overall ecosystem, the way tech is progressing, the type of talent that is coming in. Yep. For an example, in Liminal, also some of the people that we hired were not exposed to crypto ecosystem before. But they were very excited about what we were building. Yeah. Even after whatever that's happened, changed, yeah, right? In Zepay, we would have a difficult time attracting people. Absolutely. And now, if you are a crypto company or Bitcoin company, people want to work with you. Yes, and uh, that's changed. And it's a, a lot has changed actually. Exactly, and and these people are really really smart people, and they are really motivated and talented people, and that gives me a lot more hope compared to and the type of businesses that are coming in. Totally. That is also like a very very different change. And this time, I noticed that in this bear market. Market, nobody called me asking that you know like in panic calls i did not get any panic calls did you get panic calls <laughs> no i don't you know think in so. all previous cycles you used to get panic calls I, I, from yeah. friends and family and everybody right absolutely did absolutely. you get any no, honestly did you yeah. get because i really did i think the, the the worst call that i got was are you still in bitcoin that's it like they just wanted to know that i am still there and that was enough but no yeah. panic calls yeah absolutely. it's the same right yeah it's the same that's just such a massive change over it's the last six, seven change. years it's a massive change and I think as as everything uh, again, like the macro was bad, uh, there were like a uh, lot of uh, bad things simultaneously happened uh, and triggered into into crypto ecosystem. I think people uh, would have panicked. That's fine. But according to me now, people would uh, understood that okay, people are saying that Bitcoin it's Bitcoin's obituary or funeral. But we have gone through this so funeral five six times now. It's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, totally. No, absolutely. So. On this uh, auspicious talk of Bitcoin's funeral, which has never happened and which we absolutely don't believe it's going to happen. Thank you so much for uh, coming over and uh, doing this. And uh, thank you for coming on 21 Towers. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Sunny. I learned so much from you over the over years and so much from you and Saurabh Bhai over the, over the years. I hope I, you don't mind me calling you Sunny. Bhai. <laughs> but yeah, and uh, really wish you very best uh, for 21 Towers. I think, again... Uh, I, I believe that Andreas Antonopoulos was one of the biggest influencers in the crypt, in the Bitcoin ecosystem because uh, building uh, building softwares, building products is one thing, but educating people about the real thing or uh, is very very important. And I think Twenty One Towers, the the type of services they provide, where you are hand holding people into their journey and you are becoming their uh, 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 I say I'm becoming the mahin for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 really, and I think uh, the type of team that you are building is also also very very looking forward to the, the next uh, few years of Twenty One Towers, and uh, I think we all will uh, one day we will look back this journey again for Twenty One Towers and Liminal, and we would we would always say that okay, it was really really good, and we we did something good. It's exciting times. We need to get a co-working space together again, like awesome. the last couple of years. I'm missing that. Awesome, awesome. great. Thanks, right, thanks for Thanks, thanks.